My name is JP Sivolf and you're watching The Sunday Show here on ZPGNet, your source for personality-driven content. You're watching The Sunday Show. My name is JP Sivolf and it's time for your Week in Review. MMO Monday. MMO Monday went off without a hitch, and of course we did our new uh, process by which we chop it up and bring you MMO Replay. MMO Replay plays every single day at 8 p.m., and it will also take the place of other videos that didn't get released. Since I can produce a whole mess of these, there should be plenty of them to go around, especially if I'm recording like four hours every week on Monday. So make sure you check the annotation right up. Right up, right up, right up, right, 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 somewhere over here. Uh, make sure you check the annotation or click the link below to go to MMO Monday's um, MMO Replay playlist. Every week will have its own playlist, um, you know, and they'll get released when they get released. So keep an eye open for that 8 p.m. every day of the week, um, except Sunday, because Sunday usually gets like two videos all by itself. Um, we'll see. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Tuesday was Some Fox Plays Some Games Reseteer. Um, it's like a little capitalism game. It was so adorable. I had so much fun watching Krista play, and I hope you did too. Make sure you check the annotation above or the link below to check out Reseteer from Some Fox Plays Some Games. Wednesday was another Volpes Diem. We had to go back to the old ways, which means that the recording was done with Twitch and blah, 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 and all kinds of hell breaks loose. I'm getting a capture card. There's no two ways around that. I can't escape it, but it does take a while to get one because I need to get a good one and I need to get some extra cash first. Oh, hey, I've done it again. I forgot to plug in my headset. Um, that goes this way. All right, boink. There we go. Now I have glowy head. Anyway, um, it takes forever. I it's. Uh, make sure you check the annotation above or the link down below to see more of Volpez Diem, uh, Fallout Far Harbor from Fallout 4. Um, I enjoyed the episode. I did. I enjoyed shooting it with Christina. I know she enjoyed shooting it. There was a lot of fighting with the system. and uh, If Xbox would just stop being a bitch, this would be so much easier. So, capture card in the future. Keep an eye out here on ZPGNet. Thursday was Fallout New Vegas with yours truly, ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, baby. You're going to want to check out the annotation or the link down below and check out this week's Fallout New Vegas. Um, pretty sure it was the Boulder City Blues. Um, I, I, <laughs> I had a lot of fun shooting this. I still have a lot of fun shooting this. Um, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm all over the place, so I, I like to shoot other things as well. Friday was actually a double dose of MMO replay. Uh, Krista needed to take a vacation from Minecraft and some other stuff. Um, I think there was a wedding this weekend or something. I don't remember. Maybe not. Am I going to a wedding? Somebody went to something. Oh, I remember now. I'm going somewhere on Sunday. <laughs> I have all my weeks confused. Anyway, Krista needed to take a vacation reasons it's all good no worries but it'll be back next week with two episodes of minecraft so keep it tuned here to zpg net check the link in the description or the annotation above to check out mmo replay and there will still be the link to some fox play some games list down in the links below saturday deus jp it's time for side quests. You're going to want to check the annotation here or the link down below to catch up on all that goodness. Oh my gosh, that was a wild week. And of course, Sunday's is M uh, Sunday show, and you're watching that right now. Isn't that amazing? I thought it was. Alrighty, guys, let's cut this mess and head to the blog. Oh, welcome to the middle. This is where the vlog goes. It's right in the middle, where I always like it. I've forgotten what I usually say, because I've had a really rough week. <laughs> so, you know, the vlog, it happens. It's a vlog. This is where I vent. I kind of want to get Stina and Krista into doing this, too, because it's really cathartic and, like, therapeutic and shit. But, I mean, like, I can't force them, so... 
anyway, thanks for coming. This is the vlog. Um, today, when you see this, it's going to be August the 21st. That means it's my birthday. Okay, look, everyone loves birthdays. That's what they tell you, you know. Happy birthday and all that jazz. And I kind of enjoy having a birthday, I do. But I don't like thinking about how old I am. <laughs> I know, I know, I always say, oh, I'm feeling old and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's just because my body is unfortunately that of a fat man who did not take care of himself when he was younger and therefore is falling apart. <sighs> So that's why I say I'm old. But uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out today. When you see this, it'll be today. I'm recording this several days in advance. But when you see it, it'll be today. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna go with Christina out to like I don't know L.A. or something. We'll we'll fart around, and I'm gonna try and get some footage of that. You know, of us farting around, having a good time. Um, gonna probably look for some transformers uh, order some parts for the show you know um, I have some extra disposable this month that I plan on spending on things for the show and for me because this show is well the show is for me I do this because I want to uh, Stina does it because I want her to that is what she tells me I don't know if I agree with that. I think she does it because she enjoys it too. But that's what she tells me. So I got to go with what she tells me. But, like, I do this for me. And I'm pretty sure Krista does it for Krista. Also, Krista does it because, you know, she offered and I asked, said, yeah, hell yeah, please. You know, um, but that's a whole other story. Oh, God, my shoulder is killing me, dude. I don't know what I did. But I like hyperextended something or something. It's all jacked up in there. Anyway. Um, it's something weird happened at work. I don't know what it was about this week. But like people were a little extra nutty. And, uh, you know, my coworkers, I adore them. I do. I, I love my coworkers. But at some point, one of them was, you know, just hanging out doing nothing, basically. I mean, they were not doing their job. And normally that doesn't bother me. I don't care if you do your job. Unless it affects how I do my job. Now, their job was to make my job easy. And more importantly, to keep my job area safe. That is their job. Uh, at a Ferris wheel. You know, somebody's got to count the people, figure out how many baskets you're going to run, all that good stuff. And they just weren't doing it. And in the end, I just, I, I'd had enough and I asked, you know, grant you, I'm shouting over a, a motor housing, uh, hydraulic lift, brakes, and just the general noise, plus all, you know, theme parks play music and it's pretty loud music. So the only reason I'm raising my voice is to be heard clearly without getting on the microphone, because if I get on the microphone, you can hear me a good, good distance away, and I don't really want to call anyone out like that. But I asked them loudly, but hopefully not as rudely as one would imagine when you're being loud. You, How many? You got to tell me how many. And, you know, at first it was like kind of hitting a brick wall. It was like, what, what, what? And then after a few minutes, it was like, oh, okay. And then they were giving me answers that didn't make sense. And then finally, I tell them flat out, you know, you got to do your job so I can do mine. You have to tell me these things. I can't read your mind. Uh, you know, communicate a little. I don't feel like that was rude. I don't feel like that was mean. I don't feel like that was unwarranted. I feel, actually, no, I know that my only intention was to help them do their job better so I can do my job. And more importantly, you know, obviously something was lacking in their training originally, so I'm going to fill that gap. I'm going to show you how to do your job right. And it... <sighs> I 
they ended up crawling inside of the big red box. Now, at our ride, there's this box. And we put stuff in the box. It is a big box. And it separates the guests from the attendant. And more importantly, in that box, there's things like a fuse box and the phone and so on. The coworker climbs into the box through the door, which, you know, that's fine. They're like half inside. They're hiding, eh, whatever. I don't think too terribly much of it. As long as no one goes flying past the door, I don't care. There's a door down there that separates the guests from the moving parts of the machinery. They have to walk up to the machine to get in it. But we have the safety gate down there so that when the machine is moving, no one gets hurt. Now, there's two safety gates. There's an orange one that's next to me, and then there's the one down there. If they get past the one down there, the only thing keeping them from getting hit is the big e-stop button, that orange gate of mine, which is only waist high, and my reflexes. Now, I like to think I'm badass, but the truth of the matter is I'm only human. At some point, I'm going to miss it. And I don't want to kill anyone. So, kind of important that you keep that door manned. But I'm willing to let that go. Because, you know, we're still just kind of... It's, it's, it's only a few people on there. I'm not really just jamming on the speed for this thing. It's just kind of rolling. If anyone does come up, I'm going to have enough time to, like, slam on the brakes. It's fine. But this co-worker calls my boss. And tells my boss that I'm being rude. And that I'm attacking them. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, that's fine. Whatever, it's fine. So my boss comes by and talks to me. And we have a long conversation about this. The matter gets settled. I mean, you know, I gave my end. They gave their end. We came to agreements. Life goes on. But the part that I'm, I'm just having the hardest time grasping here is apparently during this discourse between my boss and the person they broke into tears and I, I can't understand that as an adult I mean like I understand the need to cry I do I do it everyone does it your dog dies you cry you go see a really cool fireworks show and it overwhelms you you get a little verklempt verklempt Hey, you read a good book, you see an amazing movie, and, you know, you missed up a little. Or you flat out just bawl. I mean, like, your eyes just... Bish, fucking water fountains. And, yeah, I get that. What I have a hard time comprehending is that... that you're doing this because... work... Now, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's who and what I am or how I was brought up. And maybe it's because my dad tried to make me a better person. Maybe it's because... Maybe it's because I spent so much time shoving everything I felt down into a bottle and just kind of... You know? I mean, yes, I was an emotional child. And I'm sure I scared my parents on more than one occasion, but those were instances where I was no longer able to stop the feelings that I was feeling. A lot of the time, I would just kind of jam it all in there. And I don't know if it's because of that or whatever, but I don't feel like when you're in a situation where you're getting paid to do a job and you're, you're out there in the real world interacting with other adults in a authoritative manner. I mean, you know, our job is to tell these people how to get on and off the ride without dying so you can have a good time. Their lives are literally in our hands. Yeah, you let 18-year-olds do that. They're going to make light of it, but I mean, that's the truth of the matter. I'm sitting here literally taking people's lives into my hands every day to try and make them giggle a little while flinging them around on this giant erector set that God knows when it's going to come crumbling down. 
even though these things are kept up to ridiculously high safety codes, there's still that small itty bitty chance. And that's why they're not fully automated. I am that thing that keeps the small itty bitty chance from hurting someone. And my coworkers are the same. It's not a God complex. It's a holy shit. I've got to take your, your life and safeguard it. We're lifeguards for non-water related wives. It's, it's, I just, I can't, I can't connect the two. And I don't know if it's like an empathy thing that I just don't have. But like, it's more than just this. This, this strikes me as the same brand of like nonsense that you get when you see people going to like college and talking about safe spaces where they don't want to hear things that they don't agree with and avoiding people they don't want to talk to. I mean, yeah, you have that right as, as an adult. But when I went to college, at least half the idea was to challenge the ideals you already had to grow as a human being, a person is not to sit in a hug box and think your happy thought all the time, but to go out and to challenge the ideas you hold against other ideas that may not agree. And in fact, will often not in the slightest agree and to either come out knowing that you're right or that you were wrong and that you can adopt new ideas that suit better to you. So I'm wondering if a friend of mine once classified this as what they call tumbleritis. Okay. And I realize this is like narrowing down to like a very specific set of people. So understand that when I call it Tumblritis, I am not trying to insult people on Tumblr. I'm on Tumblr. Tumblritis is simply the name they gave it because it's most commonly found on Tumblr. That's just the way that social media grew up. Twitter's full of assholes. Facebook's full of narcissists. Instagram's full of food. Tumblr is a hug box. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, there are people who surround themselves with sycophants. Yes, men. Who agree with them no matter what. And that's all they do. They surround themselves with, yes, this is right. Yes, this is you. Yes, this is what it is. And I don't feel that that's very healthy. And Tumbleritis is, is, is an example of this taken outside of this microcosm that is Tumblr. Tumbleritis is where someone does this in real life and then can't cope with what happens. Now, I really don't think... No. I don't want to believe that anyone I work with would suffer from this because if they did, then they would have given up by now. This world is not made for that kind of thought. It isn't. It can't. It won't function. You have to deal with things you don't like. And you can either chin up and bear it with the squared shoulders and head held high, or you can shrink down from it and run away, but you still have to cope. And if you constantly run away, or you refuse to cope with it, as a human being, you don't grow. You become narrower and more limited in your scope. You cease being able to deal with things, and you become less. I have some friends who are like that, but they don't go all the way down that road. They take a longer time to process this new information. And then they integrate it. 
and then they learn to accept or deny the reality that is presented to them. You guys know who you are. I mean, you know, if you even watch. I don't know if you watch. But, you know, I have a friend who turned into, and yes, I'm going to use the word, social justice warrior. Ooh, ooh, ugh. Ugh. Uh, but they're not the complete brainwashed mess that you see in most cases. Yes, some of their ideals are highly damaged and broken with flawed logic and holes the size of a Mack truck. But that doesn't make them a bad person. It doesn't make them less of a person. It just makes them less capable of dealing with certain things. Now, in the case of this friend, they can make the leaps of logic necessary over time to come to a corrected point of view that is not malignant. And I mean that. I mean, like, full of tumors, malignant. So, I genuinely believe that no one is beyond that kind of uh, thought. You know, we can all keep going and progress beyond it. I don't think my coworker is trapped in that place. I don't want to believe that. And if I'm proven wrong, well, then there is no way to fix it. And that particular coworker will just have to go throughout their days suffering because the world can never fit into the hug box because the people around them will not agree. You know, like... I'm not talking bullies. I'm not talking aggressive people. I'm not talking like dangerous situations where you need to remove yourself and block things and, and, and deliberately distance yourself. I'm talking about like every day. You know, these are the people that come into your coffee shop and get mad uh, when you did not put enough foam in their latte. All right, no problem. <laughs> you know, you can hear that only so many times then you get really pissed off. But I mean, like, if you immediately shut down every time they come into your shop, then you can't deal with it and you just move on being less of a person because they're always going to be able to uh, aggressively intimidate you into shutting down. You lose. You lose what? You lose you. You become less. I, I think where I'm going with this rambling nonsense is that I want to make more of my coworkers, of myself, my viewers. You should always be able to grin and bear it with a healthy understanding of your limit. You know, don't fold the instant someone challenges your ideas. You could be wrong. They could be wrong. You can't just fold. You have to keep going. And when it becomes obvious that neither of you, and I mean solidly obvious, that neither of you are able to come to a conclusion where you're just constantly butting heads, then yes, walk away. Separate yourself. But in that process of learning to deal with butting heads, you learn so much more about yourself, about the world, about the person that you're arguing with. Whether it be something as simple as a Trump versus uh, Hillary, I guess, or something as complex and twisted and impossible to truly understand without having some sort of godlike ability like climate change.
it's okay to disagree and it's important to understand not yourself but the stance of the person challenging you because in doing that you will learn more about yourself than what you already understood and you will understand them can't just cry sometimes you have to grit your teeth bite your thumb have the conflict and then you will have the knowledge but then what do I know 30 some odd years floating around it took me forever to figure that shit out and I could be wrong I did something to the shoulder and it kills me. <laughs> well, that's really heavy. Let's let's move on to something lighter. Look what I got. Whoop. Beep beep. Isn't it cool? Oh, it's so adorable. Look at him. Look at him. He's a little. <laughs> oh, look. And, and there's a little tiny guy inside here. Hold on. Let me just. Uh, how do I open this? Hold on. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay, I don't got it. I've got it! Ha ha! <laughs> Look! There's a little tiny guy in there. Hi! Look at him. He's so tiny. He's so tiny! Oh my goodness. This is the new Titans return line from Hasbro. These are the guys who make Transformers. Look at this guy. Look at him. He's so tiny! Here, here. Look at his face. Alright, hold on. This isn't going to focus. Let me just... There we go. Look at his face. Oh, he's so precious. Look at him. He's teeny tiny. He's barely bigger than my finger. Oh, my fingers are disgusting. Anyway, that comes from working. All right, so this tiny little guy, hey, becomes a tiny little head. Look at this. Look at him. He's so precious. There we go. Look at that head, though. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so why does he turn into a head, you're asking? Well, that's easy. He turns into a head for this. Poink. Take off his gun. Okay, you can kind of see how this is going to work because the bottom is pretty much the whole body of it right there. So we're just going to take him off. We're going to go ahead and open these guys up. There we go. So you can open up the feet. You're going to pull down the leg. Pull down the leg. Snap that into place. Straighten those guys out. You're going to come to the bottom half here. And you see right here, these little tabs. You're going to pull out his feetses. There you go. Got your feetses. And you're going to put up the crotch plate. Because you always need a crotch plate. <laughs> He's already looking cooler. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Now you swing the whole bitch up. Yep. There we go. Ah, He's getting kind of tall. But don't worry. He gets shorter again. You pull these out. They're not really pegged in. I don't know. Can I show you? Yeah. Okay. So there's like this little, little hole right here. Yeah. Okay. And it goes into this little piece right here that just plugs right into there. Now you've already seen the arm gimmick, but I'm just going to keep going anyway. On the back here, you can see how this whole assembly just kind of folds down. Yeah. It just tabs into place right up in here. Okay. And then this assembly comes down and it's going to tab in right here on his ass. There's a little peg right over there. There you go. That just pegs into his butt. Oh, butt peg. All right. See? Look at him now. Okay. So, you're going to swing these guys out a little bit so you can see what's going on in here. There's a hand that's folded up in this bitch right here. You just kind of... Oh, there we go. Come on out of there, you little... There you go. And it just kind of... Boop. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. It just goes into place right there. And then you just gently pull down. And there's the arm. I'm going to do it on your side so you can see. You just pull down. There's the arm. And again, you're just going to... Uh, my fingernails are all bitten down. You just pull that out like that. There we go. And these become some nice shoulders. You just kind of roll them up. And you roll them up like that. And then there's a headless guy. And as you can see, there's a little port right here. Yeah, isn't that cool? Well, that port eats his tiny, tiny head. Like this. 
tiny head right there. And it's just going to port right into there. And again, the tiny head part is going to show um, towards the feet. So you just kind of shove it in there. There you go. Heard that nice thick click. There you go. Now he's got his head. And there is the headmaster. I mean, Titan Master. <laughs> Because Hasbro would never recycle ideas. Uh, check that out. He's got a big-ass fucking arm cannon that goes right up on the shoulder, Terminator style. Oh, yeah. That's not Terminator. What is that? That's Robocop? No. Iron Man! War Machine style. That's what it is. And he's got his little gun right there. And he's a pretty poseable guy, too. I mean, you know, his head can go all the way around if you move his gun back. Ooh, he's got carry head. All right. Let's put that back up there. It kind of bumps into the shoulder um, so it, it does kind of go up. Um, leaving it up's okay, though. The arms can do a full 360. Because of the transformation joint, you do get kind of this little wiggle in the wrist here. And, of course, the bicep is articulated. And you got the little arm up and down dealy. That's kind of cool. And they do kind of fold in at the shoulders a little bit. Um, that's also part of the transformation widget right there. The gun. Uh, your legs. Your legs. Ooh. Ooh, they go all, all the way back. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, he's really posable. I'm really happy with it. This is Hardhead, by the way. Hardhead from the Headmasters series, which is now Titan's Return. Um, this is a Titan Master here. Uh, this is the toy line that had Fortress Maximus in it. And those of you who are big on Transformers know who I'm talking about. Fort Max is like the holy grail of Transformers. If you can find one in box and all that shit, it's fucking amazing. Anyway, uh, Titan Master guys have a lot of these little hidey holes for their Titan Master heads because this, this fucker will disappear in a heartbeat if you don't button it down. So like this one, it's got a little chair in the back of the gun there. There we go. Just going to close that back up. There we go. And it's just, oh, he's so wicked. He was really cheap, too. I was over at tra uh, Target, and Christina was like, yeah, sure, get him. Get him. You love Transformers. I was like, hell yeah, I'm getting him. So there he is right there. I'm going to put him in a, uh, spread his legs a little so he can sit on this little corner of this desk here. There we go. And uh, Hardhead. Um, yeah, they, this little Voyager class guy. They come in these little, ow, they come in these guys. Yeah, you can see a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the shine for the computer on there. Um, but yeah, Titan Masters, Furos, and Hardhead. That's these guys. Furos is the tiny one, and Hardhead's the big one. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. They're, they're really neat. I love Transformers. I love Transformers. <laughs> um, overall, worth the fifteen bucks. He's about fourteen ninety eight, fifteen ninety eight. Depends on which target you go to. Um, or you can just order them online. But if you order them online, beware. People will charge you way more than what they're actually worth because these are in stores now. And I've seen them online for twice, three times the price just because, you know, people buy up Transformers and then fucking resell them like assholes. It's just how it is. <sighs> All right. Well, I feel like I've gone on long enough in the vlog. Uh, let's go ahead and move on over to your week in review. No, wait. No, that's not right. Coming attractions? Yes, coming attractions. You've reached the coming attractions. Here on ZPG Net, your coming attractions are as follows. Monday is MMO Monday. Now you're going to want to catch it live because once it's done being live, you're only going to see it in MMO replays when we need to fill space or when we have the MMO replay of the day every day at 8 p.m. Now, uh, sticking with Guild Wars, paid for it, having a blast. Make sure you check our links down below. Get your own copy of Guild Wars 2 and come play with us. It'll be a blast. Or you can just watch. I like it when you guys watch. Alrighty, guys. On Monday was MMO Mondays. At Tuesday is another episode of Some Fox Plays Some Random Games. Hopefully... That information will be included somewhere down below. If not, you'll just have to wait and see what comes up on Tuesdays. It's a surprise for everyone. Wednesday is Volpez Diem. And again, we're going back to Fallout 4's Far Harbor. We're going to wrap this up. We are going to finish it, I swear. Because we got some other games we want to play on Xbox. Stina is champing at the bit, yo. We going to do this. 
Thursday is going to be another episode of Crush Crush. Um, it's going to be the last episode of Crush Crush. Now, there's a good reason for that. I have another game I really want to play, and Crush Crush is kind of circling the drain. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. You guys get the hint. It's all good. Friday, double shot Minecraft with some Fox plays some games. Make sure you keep it tuned on Friday for Krista's um, release. Saturday, Deus JP, the Popo Depot. You're going to want to check that madness out. Keep it tuned here on Saturday. And of course, every Sunday, clockwork. The Sunday Show. Keep it tuned. MMO Mondays are going to become MMO replays every night, starting Monday night at 8, Tuesday night at 8, Wednesday night at 8. You get the idea, right? I hope so. We'll see you there. All right, guys. That was an awkward cut. I like making awkward cuts, and I have a good reason why. I don't remember what it is, but I know I like it. All righty, guys. That was your Week in Review. This is The Sunday Show. Now, on behalf of Krista, your editor in Fox, Stina Volpes Oculus, and myself, JP Sobel, we hope you had a blast here on ZPG Net Sunday Show. Please remember to keep it tuned here to ZPG Net, your source for personality driven content. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next videos. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I mean it. I know there's more of you now. I've seen the list. Alrighty, guys. See you next time. Bye now!